Good morning. We're still in the book of 1 Peter. We're going all the way through word for word, line for line. We're in chapter 2, and we left off in chapter 2 in verse 20, but the theme of submission and suffering was introduced in chapter 2, verse 12. And the notion is, is that as Christians, uh, the Christians living in the first century during this time when 1 Peter was written, they were starting to receive persecution from the Roman government. Nero was emperor. He would ultimately kill both Peter and Paul. And so the Christians were being prepared to be um, victimized, even though they didn't deserve it. And in the context, they're also told very carefully to be submissive, good citizens, respectful to those that they work for, uh, even when they're treated unjustly. So I'm going to pick up reading in chapter 2, verse 21. It says, uh, well, actually, I'm, to give context, I'm going to read verse 20 again. How is it uh, how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. So God's watching the mistreatment and he's going to reward it is the idea. Verse 21, to this you were called, meaning unjust sufferings, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, uh, a model that you should follow in his steps. It says in verse 22, uh, or am I getting ahead of myself here? Let me think. Uh, no. Um, he committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. And that's where we end. So we have an awful lot to take in here. Again, we're, the Christians are being told, you conduct yourself graciously, you be respectful, you be honorable to everybody, whether they're dishonorable or disrespectful to you or not. And even if you're persecuted, even if you're treated unjustly, you just trust God. God's watching and he'll take care of it. And it says the reason we should do this is because we see that is exactly what Christ did. It says Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Then it talks about he committed no sin. So here we have a statement that Christ was without sin. We have that elsewhere in Scripture. No deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. And, of course, we can picture this all going on in the cross. When he was on the cross, the religious leaders, they mocked him. They, they uh, said, oh, if you're the Messiah, come down off the cross. And even one of the thieves on the cross said, you know, if you're the Messiah, why don't you save yourself and save us too while you're at it? And Jesus didn't respond to any of it. He suffered because he had made a value-based decision. Jesus knew that the only thing that could break the power of sin over human beings, the only thing that could bring human beings back from a place of distrust in God, disregard for God, disinterest in God, to a place of trust and interest and regard for God would be they'd have to see what God is really like. And they'd have to see that God is just not a, a being that is almighty in power, but he is a being that is, that is sacrificial in his devotion to those that he's created. And all of that culminated on the cross. It was on the cross that God could finally display to the whole universe of angels and humans the sacrificial nature that governed the use of his power. And that's what was able to bring human beings back to a place of trust in God where we run toward him instead of run away from him. Had Jesus not made the value-based decision, I'm going to suffer. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm going to let them hurl their insults. I'm going to let them mock me. He had all power on that cross. He could have incinerated every single person that was attacking him, but he did not because he knew that if he was willing to suffer, the full revelation of God would be given, and that revelation would win the hearts and minds of hundreds of thousands and probably millions uh, that would flood into his kingdom before time was over and he returns. So all that's packed into that verse. But for us, it's saying we have to remind ourselves of that when we're being mistreated, when we're being treated unfairly, when we're being persecuted and attacked, mocked, insulted, made fun of, perhaps just because we're Christian, we need to remember that's exactly what Jesus went through. So he made a value-based decision. The good that would occur from him not retaliating was far better then the satisfaction, the momentary satisfaction he would have gotten from retaliating, we need to remind ourselves, if I suffer silently, there's a higher likelihood that people someday may be more responsive to Christ than if I start retaliating, uh, even though it may be just, you know, I'm being mistreated. 
it's better to make a value-based decision. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay silent like Jesus. He's my example. I'm going to suffer silently in the hope of a greater good, in the hope of even reaching some of the very people that might be attacking. And by the way, I've lived through that and experienced that, where people that mocked, made fun, insulted me uh, in time became followers of Christ. So I hope that that will be a part of your, your storyline as well. Thank you for today, and we'll see you tomorrow.